Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. I have analysis from every pick that the commanders had during the draft up there already on ESPN.com. Go give it a read. I'm going to share my thoughts with you right now about day three, a little bit of a wrap up, and I'll get more into the analysis of the entire draft over the next few days. I'm going to have Sam Fortier on as well. We're going to get into that for Monday's podcast. So give that a listen. We're going to go into a different direction than just wrapping up each kind of a day, which is what I'm going to do now. And um, obviously the draft is over as I'm talking to you. So here's, here's what happened. I'm going to give you a little bit of a general thing, then I'm getting into a little bit on each of these guys that they drafted today. And then again, we'll start wrapping up and getting other people on here throughout the week, et cetera. So over the, over the, you know, the nine players they signed, they drafted a quarterback, a defensive tackle, a cornerback, a tight end, a receiver, a linebacker, a safety, a left tackle, and a defensive end. So no repeat positions kind of hit a bunch of different areas. And one of the things that they did in free agency that I felt like set them up for this draft was fill a bunch of holes and needs. So that lessened the burden and the desire to, or lessen the need to go fill just needs. So this was really about getting guys that you want to bring in here that may certainly the first, those first three rounds, you better find several guys that you can build with as key starters. Uh, the rest of them, you're going to try and develop them. Of course, I do think there's some interesting picks, especially today. There's one in particular that I really like, and I'll get into that in a few minutes, but this, the, the frequency period set that up well with, to the point where they didn't, outside of quarterback, they didn't have, well, and left tackle, let me take that back, but they didn't have to then just, oh, you, you have to get a defensive end. You would have liked to have gotten a defensive end a little bit higher rather than getting a guy in the seventh round. But because of what they did in free agency, they didn't have to do that. It just was something I think that they would like to have done because there's some guys there. If their guy, if those guys aren't there, then you're content going elsewhere. You needed to get a corner and you did a, a really good slot corner. Um, I still think there's some questions at corner on the outside, some definite questions. I'm not sure where it's going to go with that. Uh, I, I do have some concerns there, but let's see what the coaching impact is on guys like St. Juiced and Forbes. And they also brought a few guys in so they can piece it together, but I don't know what it's going to look like. And I do like what they've done in some other areas. And again, I'll get into more of that as we get beyond the draft. But as far as the draft goes, you ha you do have some guys I think are interesting um, who can help in maybe whether it's even if it's just special teams. Um, but I do, you know, I think there was a plan with this now. Every time there's a new group that comes in, you kind of hear the same thing. They identified commander players. They identified this. They did this. Where I think the separator for this group is, I think it was a collaboration that you would hear. And the way they operated throughout this process, I think, was different. Now, will that result in better drafts? Well, you kind of have to believe it has to because some of these have, have not been very good. There's a reason why they've been in this position. And it wasn't just the last couple of years. It's just been sporadic over the years Like you may have a good draft here or a good draft there, but you never could sustain it because the collaboration did not exist to where it needed to. Will it stay like this? I think it's the style of the people in charge will allow that to happen. Josh Harris wants it to be the case. Adam Peters wants it to be the case. Dan Quinn isn't sitting there angling for more power. <clears throat> and in fact, one of the things that I think he likes here is that he doesn't have to have all that power. He can just be the coach. So you have, I, I think you have a better chance to build on, if you have success history with the Jeff, I think you have a better chance to build on that. I'm also going to be curious to see what happens with the scouting staff, the rest of the front office, once we get past this point because this is when more changes start to get made in front offices and in the scouting departments because they're they're signed through the draft and then you know we'll start to see some things some decisions getting made there but again i think there was it sounds like they had an idea in mind of the kind of guy they wanted to draft because it was a definite theme throughout and that was you know team leaders and i brought talked about this on on the podcast Saturday morning but team leaders guys who play physical you know, there's a violence there. And I mean, this is a violent sport, but some guys play with more violence than others. And those are the kind of guys you really kind of want on your roster. So there's a couple of guys that fit that bill with the physical nature, the, the leadership types, and the guys that can be part of 
winning programs or come from winning programs and be part of some building something here. And this is the first group for this, for this, for this staff. So I think it's going to, I think it's, it's always a little bit more meaningful when it's your first, when it's your first um, class, but this is who, so this is who you say you want to build with this group. And I think they, they can lay the foundation of what this staff wants to do. Now, the key is that this coaching staff now has to take what they've been given and develop, because if you don't, then it's not going to work. Uh, but I think the other interesting thing too, is I think Peter's involved the scouts a lot more than they had been. I think they were a little bit more present throughout this process, even during the, during the, even during the picks than they have been before. And I think that's a little thing, but I think scout, you know, you want your work to be appreciated. And I think that was the case with how they operated. And Peter's talked about on Saturday, how he wanted to have like a, a commander's caucus during the last few rounds and something they did in San Francisco where you basically have the scouts get up, on, get on the table, so to speak, to stump for a guy that they think would fit what the commanders want. But what that does do is it, it, it should, if you're, it should help the scouts feel more heard. And one of the things you'd hear when Bruce Allen was here is there were some scouts that they actually like working here, but they didn't always feel appreciated, whether it was because their voice wasn't heard or because of the pay. I mean, that you know, let's face it, like, you, how you get paid also tells you how you're appreciated um, at times, especially in this business. And if you're not getting that kind of pay, you don't feel as appreciated. And if you're not being heard and not being paid, then that's not a good situation. So I'll be curious to hear, get some feedback on this later to see if what I'm saying is actually, if that's how others feel too, but it is what you heard a little bit during this process. And I, again, I think there was more, there was a good plan. Listen, and look at Adam Peters. Like this is, since he got here, he's had to hire a coach and a coaching staff. And then all he's had to do is find the franchise quarterback and then have a really good first draft. I don't think like, I don't think this guy's, t you know, come up for air since he's gotten here. So it's, it's been quite impressive what this group has had to do, but again, we don't know how it's going to pan out because you got to go do it on the field. Um, but I think the plan and the approach has been the right one. I, again, I'm a big believer that approach wins over time, whether it's the first year, second year, whatever. If you take the right approach, then you get the right results eventually. Um, and that's the same true. Same is true of Josh Harris as well. Um, they did look for specific traits. And that's one thing Lance Newmark, the assistant GM, talked about. We just had it. We wrapped up a press conference with him. Again, you're, they're all, every coach is say, we want guys with high football character, high this, you know, high that. So is there something really different here that they're looking for? Well, you can kind of look at, because some people talk about that and then they bring in guys later, you find out like, this guy doesn't fit that at all because you were just wowed by traits or something. But I do think when you look at, there are a lot of team captains, a lot of team leaders and guys that, um, you know, in that, that fit that description or mature, right? So I think, I think what they did want to look for and when they talked about like their their vision of a commander i think it played out that way but again let's see what i want i don't you know you can see what they were in college a like team captain whatever but we don't know how they fit in here but that there was a specific sort of guy they were looking for and um you know i think they they found that so there wasn't a lot of like this draft was not considered a very deep one. And I think next year is the, is the class or the group that a lot of people are looking to. And one thing I would have liked to have seen them do is somehow add picks in 2025, because that class is supposed to be loaded. Now you can always acquire more picks other ways, but this was, I wondered if they would try to do some of that. Howie Roseman has done that, but in whatever the Eagles do with their drafts and they're so aggressive, I think it's a good idea to emulate um, but they weren't, they weren't able to do it. I don't know how much they tried for that. That's something hopefully I'd find out later, but I did. I wondered if they would try to get that. Didn't get it. Got three guys. So let's go over some of these guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the fifth round, they got linebacker, Jordan McGee from, from temple team captain. There you go. Um, I think it's going to be interesting on him. They've already added a bunch of linebackers. So, you know, he's really going to be a guy who's you're going to have to play special teams. That's what he's going to be. And I think that's, that's where he can make his mark. Um, I think there were sometimes um, again, he was, he was a leader at temple. So that's, that's a good 
thing. And, and again, a good special teams player, he can run a little bit. I do think like as a linebacker, I think you could, I think that's where the coaching comes into play because there's sometimes, especially in coverage, it might look like there were some false steps in there or some, a little bit of, you know, maybe a hesitation at time or, or something like that, where with better coaching, can you improve in that area? And, and yeah, I think you can, you can, you can do that, but that is something, there are some things that you had to watch there. So as a, as a, as an, as a player from scrimmage, got a little bit of ways to go. He played a lot, you know, he, he played outside, you know, he feels he could play the will or the mic. Um, but again, I think when you're drafting the fifth round, you're not looking for a guy to come in and be anything other than he's going to be a backup. And can you play special? Can you help on special teams? Cause if you can, they can find a role for you. They did add, they added Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvu. They have Jamin Davis they added um, Michael Walker and then um, Anthony Pittman as well. So they've added some guys at that position. They don't need him to come in and be anything other than come in, show you can help on special teams, be a part of the solution here, but then, try and develop so that may maybe you know in a year or two you can ascend to a higher spot but if all you are is a good backup and special teamer you get you need linebackers like that too the better you have at line the better you are at linebacker the better you are on special teams the deeper you are at linebacker the better you are on special teams what i did like too is you could see the effort on film you could when you watch them you could see the effort there and i think that's always bodes well when you have a guy like that because you can work with guys like that guys who give effort you can always work with so i think that's one of the things that was good good for him um, then the guy, the pick that I really like in this draft and today was um, the fifth round pick, Dominique Hampton, for safety from Washington. There's a few reasons why you like him. And, and he played at Washington, played all over the place. And that's one of the beauties of him. And if you want to look at a guy who could possibly play, the, play that Buffalo nickel spot, it's, it's, it's Hampton. He's got the size. He's six foot two. I think he's about, what, 215, something like that. But he's got that size where he can play in the box. He's played some corner at Washington, believe it or not. In fact, he played corner in a game against Arizona State that was quarterbacked by Jaden Daniels. So, and he did have to tackle him a couple of times, but, but that, so he's shown that he's shown that he could, he would play deep at times at Washington. I think he's got good length and he's physical. That's the, that's something that jumps out with him. So what I think you look at him and even Lance Newmark told us that he had linebacker traits and, and Hampton told us that they look at him as a safety linebacker hybrid type. So, Buffalo nickel uh, yes that uh, we're you know we're gonna that term is sticking around so you know that's that uh, the big nickel so that that's something that I think he could play up near the box so I could see him being a guy that you work with for that year you have Jeremy Chin to fill that role now he's on a one-year deal and then see what Hampton can do and and then maybe he ascends to that in you know back up now maybe you ascend to that in the future but I think he's a guy that that I he's the guy that I, I like him. And I think, you know, there was some there's some pop to his game. He has covered some man. Um I, I don't I don't know that you're gonna want him covering a lot in that certainly not against some of the receivers or anything like that. But I think um, but I do like that. I do like him up near the box as a guy that I think could could help there. He does like to he likes to hunt a little bit, he likes to get in that mix. I think those are all good things. And I think there's sometimes the angles, you know, you're not sure about, but that's coming from deep. That's why I think up near the box, I think that's where he's going to be best. Um, and I think that physical style, again, it'll help on special teams and nothing else. You want big guys like that who can move a little bit. And, and, and then again, up near the line of scrimmage, it's, it's better than having the little guy up there, but, but I think he's got some size and traits up there that would translate well. And he's coming from a good program at the university of Washington, uh, so I think that's also a good thing. And oh, by the way, speaking of safety position, because they have Sandstrill covering as a, as a slot cornerback, what does that do for Quan Martin? And he's a guy, he could, he was a safety who could also play in the slot. So you can put him, you can put him back there with Derek Forrest and, and have a safety combo there. I like Quan Martin a lot. I still like him. I think he's a smart player. I think he communicates well. I think Sanistrill is going to be a guy that I think the corners will have to communi by, com communicate better. I think, you know, St. Juice has been pretty good with that. Um, and so I think they're going to be in a decent spot with that. Chin will, should be good with that as well. So that shouldn't be the issue that it was the last couple of years. I also think some of those communication issues stem from confusion over 
the rules of the defense at times, maybe they change a little bit too much at times, but I think that can lead to then communication errors because what, how one person sees it and relays it might not be, it could get lost in translation or, or whatever it is. So, um, I, but I do think as a group, I think they're going to be better prepared for that. And I think when Martin, again, cause he was playing the slot and some safety at the end of the year, it may just be now that he's just more of a safety because if you know, and a backup slot. Um, and I don't know how they see it. Like that's just my speculation. I haven't talked to them about that too much yet. Um, when we asked new uh, Lance Newmark was asked about, it, and he just basically said they have a plan for both guys. The other, that's the other thing too. You better have a plan for a guy when you draft him, and you, you want to know like, okay, this is what this guy can do. Have a plan for him. Don't just bring in guys here and say, well, I think, he, you know, uh, so I think there's that again, you should have that, right? That's kind of a basic thing. So, um, but I like that pick. I think he's a guy that that as as he develops could be somebody to watch a little bit just because of size and the tight and the role and the vision they have for him. One thing too, and I've told you this before with Dan Quinn, he's very big on, you know, just um analyzing how the game is going, right? And one of the things was he, you know, you notice that some guys have that positionless type body game or whatever. And so he had he talked to a lot of NBA coaches to see like in the NBA, there are guys that's it's become a lot more positionless. So he talked to them about just not, you're not going to ask an, a Steve Kerr or someone like that. Like, what should I do with Micah Parsons? But just the mindset and how, you know, maybe how you approach it, et cetera. That's why they have like guys like Bob Myers here, not just because, okay, he's an NBA guy, but he's been in a leadership position. He's had to make certain decisions. That's why he was around during this draft process to help Peters, not just like, should I take this guy or not, but what approach should I take? How should I handle this situation? You know, it's not about, him, you know, Bob Myers saying, Hey, man, I like Jaden Daniels. He should, you should take him, but it's about, you know, how should I handle this process? Knowing I like this guy a lot. Hey, take it easy. You, you don't have to make a decision now. Just go through the process. That's, that's a good sounding board to have. And, um, you know, the other thing too, is one thing with Josh Harris sitting in the draft room and just going through this process, if something doesn't pan out, he can now go back and evaluate from his own perspective why this worked or didn't work um, and, and gives them more information. Anyway, just a little aside. Let's get on the last pick is Javante Jean-Baptiste. I know him well because I watched him at Ohio State for four years. He was mostly a backup, playing behind some really good, a good linemen. Was not really a great pass rusher there. Went to Notre Dame, had a better year in that regard. Um, and, you know, I think he had the four and a half sacks. Uh, more tackles for loss, but he also got more playing time because again, at Ohio state, he was behind some guys that, that were just better. And, you know, he's got some skill. He's got some length. He's only about 240 pounds, but he's six, five good length. Uh, we'll see how he does. I, I think I still have some questions about him as a pass rusher. I think I'd like to see him. If you're going to play that end here, I'd like to see him bulk up a little bit. And, and I think it'll be um, again, the length is good though. And, I think there there are times in the pass rush. I think you know you're going to have to work with them. Uh, there's sometimes maybe is he is is does he turn the corner the way you want with the fluidity? I'm not so sure with that. But I think what I'm curious with him is how does Dan Quinn envision using him? And you know, can if you bulk him up a little bit, then can you use him on some things to the inside as well? I know that's a little bit small for that, but just the way the, some of the games you make and some of the quickness you want to get up front. It's all about the vision you have for that guy. So um, I think he he's, he seemed to handle the run pretty well in college when I, you know, with, with Ohio State and Notre Dame. I think that that can help. Um, there are times he can be quick off the ball, um, not like Johnny Newton, but he but he can help in that regard. So but I, but the, they don't need him to come in and do anything. And you could you could put him on the practice squad probably just as easily and you'll be you'll be OK. You have. You have your end. You have three defensive ends that you signed. You also have F.A. Obata. Um, so you're okay there. And then if then, then you can look at K.J. Henry and Andre Jones. Does Jones develop at all? Um, and what do they think of K.J. Henry? That part I don't know. We haven't gotten that deep into things with them yet. Um, their focus has been so much on the draft that there are times where you're not getting as you're not quite there yet with some of the other information. That's something we'll learn more over the next several weeks about what they think of certain guys um, and just how they envision them. But that's, but, but with the, with that, with the defensive end spot, again, they have four guys that can play 
right now. They don't need these guys to be part of that, but you would like somebody to ascend to a role like, okay, this guy's worth developing, right? So I think Jean-Baptiste, he was a guy that came in during the top 30, so you knew they liked him. And I think there's some traits that are interesting to see if they can develop. He's he's an older player. He's 24. So it's not like we're talking a young guy, but I think sometimes you have to look at in terms of football growth, where is he? And he did play. He was at Ohio state for five years. One of them was a red shirt. So he's been in college a lot. So, but is he a finished player? I don't think so. I think there's more you can get out of him with it, but to what level, that's the part I have no clue, but that's why you bring a guy like that. And he does have some traits that you say, okay, Whatever his age is, there's some traits here. And if it doesn't work, then you, you know, then you move on. But um, seventh round, you know, you you take a shot at sometimes at traits and guys from big programs. And that's what they did. So anyway, that wraps it up. <clears throat> also, as I talked to you, there have been a couple undrafted free agent signings or agreements, including Notre Dame um, quarterback, Sam Hartman. Now, why would they do that? Well, you have Jake Fromm was the only holdover quarterback that they kept. They brought in Jeff Driscoll. They signed Mariota. They drafted Jaden Daniels. I think if you're Jake Fromm, you kind of know what's happening here. They don't. They're not going to want to have five quarterbacks in camp. So they in they, they had talked about wanting four. Well, they brought in four of their own. So basically, you could probably envision Hartman being you know uh, Hartman in Fromm out. Don't know that for sure. That's complete speculation, but it's all based on logic. You're not. I just can't see you know may, maybe during the rookie mini camp or you know you can bring in some guys too, but um, it'd be really hard to see them carrying five guys in, in practice. Cause you just don't have enough reps for that. So that's why they brought him Anthony, excuse me, Austin Jones running back from USC. Cliff Kingsbury was the, is an offensive analyst analyst there last year, clearly knows him, And so he'd be an interesting one to see how he develops too. But those are two guys that I know for sure that they're going to bring in as I record this. And I will say sometimes with these undrafted, sometimes they agree to a deal. And next thing you know, they, they find, get something better. So an agreed upon deal becomes a a broken deal and they sign elsewhere. Um, Those will be announced on Monday. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's it for me wrapping up day three. Thank you for hanging out with me during this draft. I appreciate your time and your interest. Um, always enjoy now finally we can start talking about what does this mean for the future not just who are they going to take but now that we got these guys and we know who these are guys are now we can start analyzing what could their roles be here and not just for the rookies but for the entire team in general now we have a vision for who they are or, and so what can they become the fun start starts some fun um, part starts now and now you get may june july about three months of speculation before we get to training camp and finally can then watch go from who are they going to get to what can these guys do to finally seeing this is what they can do. That's the fun part. So then I like the, I like the spring period, the, the OTAs, your first look at them in, in, in OTA and then mini camp by the end of mini camp, it's like, all right, let's get going here. I'm done. I'm done with the speculation. Let's get to training camp. So not quite there yet. But we, we hit another step and appreciate you guys hanging around and tuning in all the time. Again, I'll be back on Monday morning with Sam Forty from the Washington Post. And then I'll have guests throughout the week and, and start providing more insight into all these picks and into the commanders as well. Thanks a lot. And I'll talk to you next time.